Hello, everyone. It's Gabrielle from A Step Ahead Tutoring Services. Welcome to a new episode of Hot Topics. So if you're not familiar with this already, this is the web series where we talk about anything that's steamy. So anything in education, employment, social services, physical health, mental health, anything that's steamy, but also kind of PG. Um, so our hot topic for today is our robots taking our jobs. And I have a guest with me who's going to help me with this discussion. Her name is Amber Hawkins. So let me tell you a little bit about her. So Amber Hawkins hails from Toledo, Ohio. She's one of three daughters to Walter and Gussie Hawkins, who are both deceased. Their brother, Arthur, passed away years ago prior. So while attending Cardinal Stritch High School, which is now called Cardinal Stritch Catholic High School and Academy, it was noticeable that she was the only African-American female in her class who was a member of the National Honor Society. All right, fellow National Honor Society alum, awesome. She then attended the University of Finley, which is formerly Finley College, but they dual BA in Spanish and social work. So she earned her master's degree in educational technology and human resources with a human resources specification from the University of Toledo. More than seven layoffs resulted in her attending assets Toledo to learn about entrepreneurship. After graduation, she used $1,000 of her unemployment money, a wing and a prayer, to birth your computer needs of Toledo LLC, which is her company. We'll discuss more a little bit later. So her company began in year 16, which is January of 2021. So her company provides customized on-sites with COVID-19 stipulations, of course, um, online and e-mobile computer training and consulting services. The company also has an online computer and accessory store. Amber brings over 20 years of computer experience to the table and over 15 years of entrepreneurial experience in order to help fellow entrepreneurs achieve goals and having their businesses more technologically sound. All right. And of course, she is the, the, the perfect person to talk about this today. So welcome to Hot Topics, Amber. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. So you're the perfect person to talk about this. So let's get started. So, you know, you have an interesting take on the role of automation and employment. So Amber, I'll turn it over to you. Are robots taking our jobs? That's the direction it's looking. And it's been that way for several years. Let me expound also as far as robots taking over. It will actually be those who don't know how to operate robots that are taking over. There's still employability, but as we've noticed from last year and even before, that has changed. You have to have a technological and computer foundation in order to forge ahead career-wise. So you're saying that's the way things are, are going nowadays. So what, what caused this shift in um, looking for artificial intelligence, which we commonly know as AI. So where did this shift come from? This the shift of using AI to, uh, to complete these tasks that humans are known to do? I would say one of the things is 
incorporation of a tool that will help get things done faster. That's one thing because there's speed, there's agility, and there is the in more incorporating of technology in order to even stay competitive. The use of the robots too, you might as well say include safety because there have been some occupations that may have been deemed dangerous. So instead of increasing or continuation of injury to us, incorporate and include robots in doing this. Uh, this actually has been going on for over 10 years, at, at least, including the uh, thought of having it. As in anything, it's been, you know, something controversial, like, oh, you know, this is not going to work. How are you going to have something automatically done in order for you to carry on with your business, the career, or, or whatever? However, anything that is new, different, is going to be looked at strangely and thought, oh, you know, that's not going to work at first. But with persistence and all of that, you've got people who were not only in the background, but also in the forefront who are proponents of this. Having things automated means that a, a task he, done here, the push of a key on the keyboard done there for certain commands, that will equate to better use of time. So you have the time factor. You have how can we technology and computer wise improve what we already do. So again, you have that. You also have those in computer technology, which is such a broad scope as far as industry is concerned, but at the same time has many specialties. So you have those who wanted to do something specialized in helping, you might as well say, time management and doing things more effectively and including more use of technology in order to go forward instead of going backwards. Mm. So what about the, the argument that, that employers are turning to AI and computers and more automatic machinery uh, to cut costs because there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about raising the minimum wage and the well the federal minimum wage I want to point that out um, some mm -hmm. states have adopted the the fifteen dollars an hour while others have not but there's a lot of talk about mm -hmm. the raising the federal minimum wage. And the concern about that is if you raise the wage, you know, employers won't be able to afford that. So they will be forced to lay off employees and, um, and, and turn to AI and, and turn to robots and machines and stuff like that. So what do you, what do you say to that? There are cons and pros to all of this. Uh, first of all, those who are proponents of AI, robotics, and that are ones who have honestly the liking of what technologies can be used in order to better everything. And they had backgrounds already as far as their knowledge of computers, their knowledge of technology and even the knowledge of that. And those are more and more, if you have noticed, the ones who have been in charge. So if there's an idea or a proposal brought in front of them on how AI and robotics can do this, that, and the other, you know, oh yeah, let's do this, you know, whatever. To cut costs, as far as that argument is concerned, to cut costs, maybe production-wise, and 
and how what would take maybe five, 10 people to do can be done with one robot, you have that. But in order for a robot to do this, there's the cost of getting the robot, knowing how to operate it, knowing what to do as far as learning the training on how to operate it, knowing how to troubleshoot in case anything happens to that robot or happens with any AI software, or if the software or different components of that robot are outdated or need to be replaced. There's a lot of costs as far as that is concerned. So it's like, well, if having 10 people will be less than having this robot, why, you know, replacing the 10 people? It goes back to what I said before. You have the 10 people, but they don't have the knowledge of knowing AI or operating the robot. And you have the one robot in which it only takes maybe two or three people to operate it. Yes, it's gonna cost, but we don't need as many people to do what needs to be done. That's why many times I always say, you have to be computer literate and technologically literate because this is the way in which you are going to survive, especially now. If you don't get that foundation, at least computer-wise, because, I mean, you're going to have to use some type of computer software to operate anyway, and in any other ways you have to operate AI and how to operate the robot, and or you have to pay a consultant to help facilitate, help train or whatever that, that's going to be a cost as well. So we have a lot of cost to look at it and see if it's going to be worth it and if it's going to be worth the return on investment for a lot of people, a lot of companies. Yes, it's going to be worth it because they have to look at themselves not only locally where they are, they're going to have to look at themselves, especially worldwide because it is quite competitive. If your competitor is faring off better because of AI and robotics, guess what you're going to have to do in order to stay competitive? And your competitor has those who have the knowledge. If you're trying to compete or stay afloat, as they say, or stay in the know, you have to do what you have to do. But I go back also again to the need for having the training to do so. If you don't have the training, that's going to be a disadvantage to you instead of an advantage, which is a lot that I said that's true, but it's just a summary of what's involved. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit more about being uh, computer savvy and, and getting that computer training because it seems to be um, that these jobs that's going to the machines, uh, it tends to be the, the entry level jobs, um, things like cleaning and assembling packages, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. not, not so much like the higher up there, um, but then I kind of thinking about it now, like, in, like, like with the, the, what's my thought, the law field, like, like lawyers, you know, people are, they're going to like websites, for example, to get their law questions asked, as opposed to going to an actual attorney. So I know there's two different things I, I, I spoke about, but let's focus on one at a time. So you talked about, we need to be more computer literate and computer savvy. Can you delve into that a little bit more? Being more computer literate and being more computer savvy? Yes. The exposure, right, the exposure of it. 
Yes. You have maybe those of us who didn't have exposure until later on. Some of us are from the typewriter age, which is, you know, quite a while back. And there are those of us who were part of the evolution where it changed from the typewriter to the computer. The computer has been around for a long time. It's just that the increased usage of it was becoming more prevalent. I will go back to even late 70s, early 80s. And as far as uh, some of that uh, transition, because for me, it was from high school to college where I first learned really about computers uh, on a Apple Writer two and three series. I'm really going, <laughs> you know, I'm going really back there. Now, a lot of high schoolers, even a lot of elementary, even a lot of kindergartners today, their exposure to it is early and you might as well say from birth. So you have that premise. When was this brought about in which the uh, foundation was established? So I'm going back to, you know, later on instead of early. There's that difference. There's the difference also in these jobs for the businesses and everything. Many are coming already knowledgeable computer-wise, knowledgeable technology-wise, and sometimes knowing much more than the people who was interviewing them. So, so sometimes that could be like a little uncomfortable, but it is what's needed. Not everybody has had a start from maybe the ground up, knowing computers, knowing technology. But along the way, it needs to be emphasized that your foundation needs to be established. Many people, their foundation became a challenge because they need to have knowledge of it, but then don't have the understanding of it. I'll make that number two. The, a lot now already have the understanding. They got the understanding early. Those who, let's say, with senior citizens, the understanding of it was not necessary at that time. Maybe earlier before the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, on from there. Through time, as we have seen, it's changed to where if you don't know anything about computers, that is going to say whether you go ahead or you stay behind. I'll take another example as far as let's say a person being laid off and their knowledge is based on what they were doing before they were laid off. They come back to the work world. They're going to come to changes that they are going to have to learn about. Let me bring the other side. Will that workplace, if they see them as a deemable employee, an employee they want to hire, will they, I, although I believe they should, will they take the efforts in helping with the training? Many times, many of these companies with still everything going on, you're going to have to still know something about computer technology because you got the mini computers or the mini tablets or whatever, the use of the iPad to have the operation of the business entity do what it's supposed to do. Many entities are more computerized now because they had to be. 
more had to accept the fact that what I went back to before in order for my business order for my academia in order for my workplace to thrive I need to have the machinery I need to have the devices and I need to have the know-how in order to function and operate so you got all of that Believe it or not, as part of the answer to your first question, I'll you know I'll, I'll take all the information you got. <laughs> so, so basically, what you're saying is, in order to, we're in a new world, right? We're in a new digital computer age, and maybe in some ways it was propelled by the pandemic. Uh, so you're saying for us to survive in this world, we have to increase those computer skills, increase those digital skills, and to be, I guess, to look worthy to an employer nowadays, you have to show that you, you have that, at least the basic computer knowledge. Is, is that fair to say? That's fair to say, and including, uh, I know you started asking about as far as, let's say with the lawyers are concerned, because, you know, sites such as, you know, Ask a Lawyer or whatever, which a person can go to a website to ask a legal question, and then let's say whoever gets shot the question, they'll answer back. See, there was a time when that didn't happen. You had to go in person to see a lawyer. You had to actually dial the number or tap the number on the phone to talk with your lawyer on the phone. The pandemic put in place, if you think about it, the need to know how to do things virtually. So virtually, lawyers had to talk with their clients. Virtually, they had to use their smartphones or their Google Voice or whatever they had to use. Virtually, they had to have meetings, be using masks in courtrooms, or if the courtroom or the court sessions were all virtual, and needing to get like just in time, which would be like, okay, I don't have time to do a traditional training period. I need to know this now because I still need to function and represent this client or represent this company or you know whatever and then on the other side you got the courtrooms who is like okay we got to increase the use of computers and make sure we have this streaming platform in order for it to do it which majority of the time you know was zoom so i say that to say all this even professions even different industries who really didn't have to rely on computers and technology had to really rely on computers and technology because that's the way things were blown up. It's like, okay, I got to do this. I don't have a choice. Plus I gotta make sure I stay safe so I won't get sick and everything. And that continues on even incorporating hybrid if necessary, but even with that, you still have to limit who can physically be there and the stipulations will have to be followed to continue on doing what you're doing. Right, so the rise of, the rise of, so sticking to the law example, so the, the rise of these, uh, these websites. So like, I think Avo mm -hmm. is one, um, Nolo is another one. So mm -hmm. the, the rise of those, so it's like lawyers today have to adapt to that technology or they, they won't be seen as useful. Is that right? That's one way to look at it. And that's with all other professions too. The question mainly when someone is you know, trying to learn about you, 
one of the main questions, the top question, if not the number one question. Hello, how are you? What's your website? Or do you have a website? Will a website be forthcoming? Then you have next the, although it could be another question, another topic, I'll, I'll just mention it as far as making sure there's a web presence of one form or another. Are you on social media? Do you have Facebook? Do you have Twitter? Do you have LinkedIn? Do you, at one time, do you have Periscope? Uh, do you have Instagram? Do you have Snapchat? Do you have an app? Do you have a YouTube? Are you available via Zoom? Are you available via WebEx? Are you available or do you have your own platform? Do you happen to have a voiceover number? I mean, everything on from there is involved and crucial to whether your, I'll just say entity, will still be around or not, or will still be useful because people are going to go where they can get what they can get. You might as well say computer and technology wise, especially since we're still mobile, not like we're used to, but we're still mobile. And not that we don't use laptops or desktops, but are you really an equip? If I only have my smartphone, are you still reaching? Mm -hmm. Fair point, fair point. So I just wanna bring it back a little bit to the employment part and, and jobs. So uh, I'll give an example. So, so here in New York, we, we have uh, these toll bridges. So if you're crossing from one state to another, you will cross the toll bridge. So I would say maybe three years, I wanna say two years ago, we started uh, doing the automatic one. So prior to that, we actually had toll people in the booths. Um, I mean, this is particularly from New York to New Jersey. I think it still exists mm -hmm. in other states. But now, um, now you just drive straight through and the machine will snap a picture of your license plate or your easy pass. So there's no people at the toll booths anymore. Um, so that is an example of losing your job to, to computers and to machines. And, um, and I mean, I don't know what happened to those people. You know, I don't know if, uh, they had to go look for other work or, you know, if they were moved to another department, I don't know, but just, I would say in the, the tri-state area, um, that there's a lot more automatic machines and all in the, all in the spirit of being quick and fast and efficient and getting things moving. But what does that mean? That, you know, humans aren't working anymore and we're now relying on computers. So, uh, so what do you think of that? You have a couple of scenarios with that. You have those who probably change careers because they got laid off and it's not working out. So they switch careers. You have those who, once they were laid off, they probably went to entrepreneurship and, you know, got involved with building up their businesses. You have those who are probably still working for the tolls, but they're working more behind the scenes because they learn that, okay, I still want to keep my job. If I learn and pivot to what I used to do, yes, I used to stand there to take the monies and all of that, but this is going to involve a form of computers and technology. 
Let me learn this as I'm learning a new skill so that not only will I be able to keep my job, I'll be able to stay longer, function, increase usefulness. And a lot of times the incorporation of computer technology equaled higher pay. You have that factor in even the midst of what I said before is was going in the direction of, and it's still, believe it or not, going in the direction of the more knowledgeable you are computer technology wise, the more you will be gaining income wise. You have all of that in effect. You have those that maybe it was too much for them. They were close to retirement. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and retire. You have those three scenarios. You also have those who it wasn't implemented everywhere, maybe around that area in. New York, New Jersey, wherever else, and anywhere else, Midwest, anywhere else, South, anywhere West is like, okay, they have this in New Jersey, New York, but they haven't implemented the use of computers yet down in Tampa or Atlanta or Charlotte or whatever. Let me move there and I could continue on you know, working, but you have all four of those things, but in time with all the four things I mentioned, guess what followed? Maybe not right away, but guess what followed? All right, there's the easy pass, or if it's called something different anywhere else, the use where you don't see a human being, you see the machinery, or you see the person kind of like how we are, you know, behind the screen, it's crept into Tulsa. It's crept into Chicago. A month or two later, it crept into Lincoln, Nebraska. Four months down the line, it crept to the lower part of California. Although already the upper part of California had it going on before it even got to New York and New Jersey. Uh, a year or two ago, Europe was already doing this. Japan was involved in updating their systems with this. So if People think they're going to escape from computers and technology, from AI and from robots, from drones and everything like that. No, nope. <laughs> you're not going to escape from it. I'm telling you right now, if you try to, I'm sorry. Eventually it's going to catch up because even if you have some questions about anything anyway, you have to use this format, for instance. You have to make sure that if you still use a landline, not, not the type of landline in which you, at once upon a time, put your finger in the dial and then the dial thing had to go all around and everything. I'm probably going to get a, huh, what was she talking about? <laughs> I went way back, I know. To where your landline has to be a specifically designed phone that can make use of a headset like this in order to make use of your phone because how things were 20, 30 years ago aren't that way anymore, anymore or hardly that way anymore because along the way, you have those that the customer service is only available via email. That's, that's how, or chat. That's how they know how to do it. They wouldn't know 20 years ago how, or 50 years ago, how to operate themselves as far as customer service. You have all those dynamics involved in the answer to your question. 
because if they again tried to escape it, it eventually caught up with them. And even going back to your drone example, like why use a photographer when I can just use a drone? You know, like it's, <laughs> you know, it's um, as if drones are cheaper than people, then you know, and, and then people get sick and they get injured as opposed to a drone. Okay, they may get broken here and there, but it's, it's a it's an easy fix. So like, like, like if you know how, right? But if you know how to fix it. It's not an easy fix if you don't know. If you don't know, do you know who to contact to get it fixed? And do you have the budget to make sure you could pay out for it to get fixed? It goes back to this. Yes, why I pay a person? Or should the question be, who can we get? to make sure that in case anything happens with this drone and there needs to be repair or the software or the functionalities of a need to be updated or maintained or whatever can do this. Do we know anybody who can? So my recommendation highly is you now, even before, you have to be the person that knows this instead of the person who does not know this your knowledge of ai your knowledge of robotics your knowledge of operating a drone currently drones are used for aerial shots of everything happening with this you know with this hurricane this hurricane Ida. my thoughts for you know all the regions involved for safety and, and everything. And this is being seen pretty much in real time via everything from you're looking at TV to mainly, if you think about it, on social media to YouTube to whatever other streaming software or sites or whatever are being used. That's because you have those who know how and what to do with that. You have someone who is managing and maintaining whatever, let's say, new station, social media page. You got people who know how to do that, how to maintain, how to monitor the comments, how to upload the videos, how to edit the videos in case the video requirements are being met who at the same time know how to YouTube, do it YouTube and add the special effects and all of that. I'm going kind of fast, I know, but <laughs> you have to these days operate like that to making sure that however you need to operate the drone to show live this aerial footage, you gotta know that. And that's that's a fair point. And I don't think you can really avoid cost if you're using a drone to cut costs because I mean, yeah, there's the repair, there's the maintenance. And then I believe drones need internet connection, which you need to be able to pay for that. So, you know, if it's one drone, then it's two drones and it's three drones and then that's more internet. So, mm -hmm. um, and then, you can't have too much on the internet or else it slows down. And so it's, I mean, you're, you, these employers, they think they're cutting costs by turning to AI and machines and computers, but they're just using it up in other ways. And eventually, like you said, it's going to catch up. You know, they're going to realize, you know, I need more internet. They're going to realize, oh, I need more maintenance. Um, you know, I need people to clean, I, to clean the machines and, and all that. And, you know, and it's like you said, it's eventually going to catch up to them. Mm -hmm. You're going to need those who 
okay, what if I'm in an area that I don't have access to a passcode to get on the internet? I'm going to have to have my own hotspot in order to do that. And let me make a disclaimer here by saying, no, I'm not a drone expert. I need to make sure of that. But I'm going to, with what I do know about drones, just say this. I am the person that's going to say, no, I don't know everything because I don't. Whatever anyone else is the expert of operating, they're going to have to follow directions and procedures on your part because we all don't know everything. Now, my specialty is not the same specialty as someone who operates a drone. You know, foundation-wise, we have to have the knowledge of computers and technology in one form or another, but whoever operates a drone, let's say, they went that direction as far as doing what's necessary to learn how to operate the drone, how to maintain it, what to do, what not to do, and all from there. Whereas the direction I went, I'm more software training, training those helping in capa different capacities to help bridge the gap between those who know and don't know about computers and technology. So I'm taking like somebody from the very beginning to at least they can have the foundation established so they can continue on functioning more. It might not be the same direction that I went, but whatever direction they're going, at least they have foundation-wise, you know, some knowledge of computers and technology. There are a lot of things about drones I don't know. So even I would have to rely on someone who's an expert in operating that. However, though I don't know how to operate it, I do know that if you don't want the drone to take over, have the knowledge and the training so you can operate the drone in order for you to be attractive to an employer and attractive to someone in supplier diversity, you know, to try to gain a contract for your business. Be attractive to someone, you know, I, I seen you when that drone was having problems, I noticed how you fixed that. I'm impressed. I need to talk with you for a moment because I believe I know someone who can use you. I, I know someone who will need your help. And anybody who operates a drone, anybody who knows about robotics, anybody who can help a company become more automated with AI, they're going to get paid a pretty penny because they position themselves to know how to do it. I'll say it again. If you don't know how to do it, you're not going to be in the running. I don't mean to be mean, but that's how things are nowadays. That's okay. Be, be as mean as you want. That's the purpose <laughs> of this web series <laughs> is to be see me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right. I'll make sure to do that. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and even, I mean, Drones was just the example. We don't know everything about drones, but even something as simple as McDonald's. I think in the past two or three years, they started putting up those machines inside the McDonald's. The kiosk. Yeah, mm -hmm. the kiosks. And mm -hmm. which is a lot easier for me, which is awesome. I love the kiosks, but then it's like eventually, you know, what's to stop McDonald's from just doing all kiosks? and getting rid of the, <laughs> you know, getting rid of the, the counter people altogether. And, um, and um, I mean, they haven't done that yet, I guess, but um, you know, what's, what's to stop them from just, we're just gonna do straight kiosks. And, um, but then someone has to maintain the machines and, and someone has to keep it up and, how do kiosks don't control the massive crowds <laughs> at McDonald's? So, 
Yeah, like something simple as that. Yeah, something simple as that, that actually isn't something so simple. I'll, I'll let you know why. It, there are, believe it or not, a great number of locations where it's like mainly kiosks. Where is, where are the people? Are there any people? Are there anybody's there? Yes, they are. Those are the bodies that have been trained to know how to take care of the kiosk basic functionality in case anything happens. Now, if there are problems where it's more outside the realm of any employee at McDonald's, they all have to contract out with whoever can fix those machines. But overall, the ones who are there are the ones who are more computer and technologically sound, more computer and technologically knowledgeable, more computer and technology capable to do what needs to be done. Though that's who's there. Those that know who's not there for whatever reason, outside of computer technology. There are many factors I'm to, you know, due to time, I'm not going to expound to all of that because yes, there's a lot that could be evolved on why, why a person's not there. Just computer technology wise, someone's not there because one of the main reasons they don't know and or they had a challenge in being trainable. So now my question to you is, and we're about to wrap it up. Um, okay. My question to you is, is there, because of the shift to AI and computers and the, maybe the favoritism from employers for computer savvy people, computer knowledgeable, computer capable people, is there a, a shift to a much younger force? Is there ageism in hiring because of the preferability for computer savvy people? Is it a, a preference for employers to pick younger people as opposed to people, I would say, 40 and under, as opposed to people over 40. I wouldn't rule it out. Many times I hope that's not the case, but then at the same time, I wouldn't rule it out. I will bring up, though, this. Anybody who's, let's say, 47, 48, how computer literate are they? Do you have problems with ageism? Because you have someone 47 coming to whatever reason wish to be employed in your facility. You have someone who is younger. Maybe the person who is old, older shows more of what may be considered the work at. Like I'm going to be 15 minutes early. I'll stay over if I have to, if I have to work overtime or whatever. But you have someone who is younger, maybe the same, except for a few things, you know, a few uh, dis advantages, disadvantages, whatever. But they pick the younger person. This is usually ageism looked at, you know, disadvantage to anyone a certain age or older, which needs to be combat eliminated. Many times they don't talk about the ageism going the reverse because sometimes it could be favoritism or doing a favor for someone. You have that dynamic too. And you have many other dynamics and not so point A, point B, point C area, you know, things going on, but I'll conclude by saying capability is going to equate to what you know. 
Should there be this thing with ageism? No, there shouldn't be. However, as I said before, as an example I've used, the 47-year-old person now didn't really have to have foundation established computer technology-wise because this person who's coming in 18 or 20 came foundation-wise computer technology savvy already. There goes also the time in the training. Can this person learn the training quickly? Because it might take a long time ago, it may take a minimum of a week, two weeks of training, and then onward to your job. It may take one or two days and then onward to what you got to do. Maybe this 47-year-old person may not adjust as fast as someone who is 18, 19, or straight from high school. But then again, you could be wrong. Then again, it could be vice versa. It, it, it's a lot. <laughs> Honestly, it's a lot. But who can be knowledgeable and who can be the one who says... Yeah, that person, although younger, may have the knowledge. So do I. Give me a chance to demonstrate why. Vice versa. This person may be older, but I have the knowledge and I also have this skill set and this advantage. So let me explain why. A lot of places are intergenerational, but then at the same time, it, there's a lot involved that we're not going to have time to dissect and whatever it goes back to are you knowledgeable so that you can be attractive computer and technology wise computer technology wise do you have the knowledge so that you can have an advantage these days because you've got to have that knowledge have that established. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we are winding down. Do you have any final advice to our viewers, uh, for the people watching? Any, any final words of advice you'd like to give? Well, first, I thank you for this opportunity. I greatly appreciate it. And my advice to anyone is you don't give up as far as even if you're not that computer or technologically savvy. I always say when people say, well, he or she knows more than I do. That's because they got their start earlier. Let me help you get started so that you can progress to where you need to be. They progress because they had their start before you, but that's them. We're talking about you. Let's get you started so you can be on your way. So get that foundation computer-wise, everyone. Get that foundation te technologically, everyone. Because we're not going backwards. We still haven't seen anything yet as far as anything computer technology-wise. I won't be surprised if something new comes before the end of October of this year. Awesome, awesome. All right, so thank you, Amber, so much for, for joining me today. And you guys, you can find Amber on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube. She is all over the social media spectrum. You can also find her online. Her website is www.yourcomputerneedsmet.com. This, of course, all of this will be provided to you in the description. And most notably, she also has her own shop on amazon.com, so which uh, will also be provided to you guys in the description as well. And if you go to that website, you can buy computer supplies, 
PPE, and so much more. So definitely take advantage of that if you, you need a, a monitor or you need some gloves or a modem, headset, whatever it is, just go to her, her page to get that. And she also has rave reviews from her customers. So there's a little video I'm gonna show you and that explains all of that. So please uh, take a look at the video. We just received a glowing review from someone who's thrilled about our top-notch five-star service. And now we're excited to share the great news with you. Take a look. Since day one, the top three things about Amber Hawkins for a little over 10 years? Loyalty, knowledgeable, and helpfulness. When there were questions regarding computers and technology, she was my go-to consultant. If she didn't know the answer, she would either find the answer or refer me. For all businesses that are in need of computer consultation, Ms. Hawkins is your go-to person. We want you to experience the best service possible, and at the same time, we would love the chance to show you why we received such amazing reviews. So why wait? Contact us today at the number on your screen. We look forward to serving you. Thanks for watching. And that concludes our episode for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please check out our YouTube channel for more videos and clips. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can also find us at Step Ahead Tutoring Services. We are also all over the social media spectrum. Well, almost, almost. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Eventbrite, and WhatsApp. So definitely check us out. And if you would like to learn more about our services and workshops, you can visit us online at www.acepaheadtutoringservices.com. And one last thing before I go, we are also seeking financial contributions to our crowdfunding campaign on ifundwomen.com. The funds will be used to keep our staff employed, offer free and low cost services and workshops. It'll help keep this web series running. It'll also help us keep our uh, virtual workshops free and it'll allow us to reach out to families nationwide. So we have a unique link on iPhone Women, which will also be provided to you in the description. Please consider making a contribution. Ah, please consider making a contribution. No amount is too small. We will definitely appreciate all the support. So tune in next time, you guys. I am looking forward to seeing you at the next episode. Signing off. Bye.